bar car two declarations. So here's a piece of code which seems, you know, kind of reasonable at the at the glance uh, at a first glance. I have a I need to select the last name and the first name of an employee. Now I need to declare a variable to contain that last and first name combination. And the question is, how do I declare it? Now I'm sure a lot of you know about percent type and percent row type declaring a variable based on something else, and it sure would be nice to do something like this. Let's go over to Toad. So declare the full name. Sure, it would be really cool if I could do full name employees dot last name percent type, and then write my select statement. But that's not going to work because I have last name and first name combined together. And there's no way with percent type to say, let's, uh, let's add them together. So while it would be pretty cool, I suppose, to do something like this, how about type length plus that type length for first and last name? That'd be pretty interesting, but you can't do anything like this when you have a derived value, something that you can't tie back to a single column or a single row. You can't use those percent anchorings. So what tends to happen is that we look at the situation, if we even knew about percent type, and we say, well, uh, that's not, I, I need to declare a variable. And I have to figure out what the size should be. All right, so what do I do? Hmm, I'll go into my schema browser, look for the employees table. First name is 20, last name is 25, that's 45. We'll add one more, 46, or 47 if I have a space in between. So that's 47. I'm going to double it. I'll make it 100. That'll be more than enough. It's never going to get bigger than that. And so we, we, I make an assumption. First of all, I spend a lot of time sorting out how big it could be and doubling it or maybe tripling it or making it 1,000. And I say to myself, good, it's never going to get to be that big. And one of the things I suggest you think about as you're writing your code is to listen to what you're saying inside your head as you're writing your code. Or if you're saying it out loud, you can listen to that. But mostly we say things to ourselves. And often what we say is, is problematic. So if you ever hear your inner voice, your inner programmer voice saying, it's never going to be this, or it's never going to be that, and you're not saying it's never going to stay the same. In other words, if you say anything besides that with the word never in it, most likely you're putting a bug in your code. It's never going to get bigger than that. And today it's true. If I declare it as varcar 200 it's never going to, get a, going to get as big as that because we just verified the maximum sizes of the columns. But of course, and the whole point behind percent type is that somebody can come along and change the structure of your table. And in fact, you generally as a developer don't have control over that. That's something the DBAs would be doing. So the DBA could change the size of this column to 500 and this one to 200. And suddenly, we could have a maximum size of 702. <clears throat> And you might not see any bug from that for a long time. In fact, years could go by. This code could be working for years and years and years, and suddenly somebody with a really long last name is hired, and then the code breaks. And as I'm sure many of you have had experience, when you have to maintain somebody else's code, and it's been working for years, and you didn't even change it, nobody changed the code, and suddenly you're getting errors, that is a very painful process to go through. In fact, it can be a real nightmare. And so what you want to do as you're writing your code is think not only about today, but think about the future and make sure that you write your code so that no matter what happens in the future, your code is protected from that change as much as possible. And the bottom line is that putting a hard-coded limit is never going to do that for you. Even if you decided that the rule, the standard for our organization, is that every var car 2 declaration should be 32767, you still could run into a problem because Oracle could change that, could change the maximum. That's the current maximum for a var car 2 variable, but maybe in the future it will be 64K. Maybe in the future there'll be no difference between var car twos and clobs. So you really want to avoid that hard-coded values. And in fact, my suggestion is that you should consider every single var car two declaration to be a bug. It's a bug in your code unless it is the single point of definition of that type. Now what I mean by single point of definition is that it's defined somewhere, and you, you reference that definition whenever you declare a new variable. That's what percent type is. It's a single point of definition for any variable based on a single column of a table. And we should use percent type whenever possible. But when we can't, what do we do? We should use a subtype. Subtype is one of my favorite features in PLSQL. It's a very simple thing. It basically creates an alias for another data type. So here's a subtype 
in my employees rules package, all the rules having to do with managing employees. And I declare my subtype, I can give it whatever name I want, and I say is some base data type. And then in my code, I now reference that data type, that new subtype, as the data type of my variable. Now clearly I've still hard-coded the varchar2 declaration. It's now at a maximum of 1,000. But the bottom line is that if I use this formulation for declaring any variable that needs to be populated with the full name of an employee, then if I ever need to change it, I change it in one place, just like changing the column definition of a table. I change it in one place, the package has to be recompiled, all the programs depend on that, on that package have to be recompiled, and they take on the new structure, the new maximum limit of our cartoon. So subtype is a perfect way to avoid ever having a hard code of our cartoon declaration. And again, seriously, you should consider it a bug, a bug. And, in, and this should be fairly easy to search through in your code because you could do a search for all your var car2 declarations either using a text search or using PL scope, which is an 11G feature that allows you to do some really nice detailed searching through your code base. You can identify all of these bugs, really potential bugs, and go about changing them. So, as with any given topic that I'll be covering today, there is much more to learn. Subtype, the subtype statement is simple enough, and it's one of the things I love about it. It's a trivial uh, feature from the standpoint of syntax, but it has incredibly powerful impact on the maintainability and the quality and the readability of your code. But there are some things to look at. For example, you can, in some cases, propagate constraints through a subtype, not in all range of values and so on, which can be very helpful. And I'll be covering those details at the 15th and 16th December training. So. Join me for more on subtypes.